No, the F-35 all but certainly does not have a kill switch, but to be honest, America wouldn't really need one either. Now, the F-35 is already among the most widely operated fighter jets in the world, but recent foreign policy decisions made by the current administration have left some partners and allies worrying that America can just power their stealth fighters down. Now, the F-35 is, to a large extent, a flying supercomputer, with a suite of onboard systems all integrated to work in concert with one another by some 8 million lines of code. And this is why people believe there could be a kill switch tucked away somewhere within the deepest recesses of the F-35's digital innards. But every person that I've spoken to within both the U.S. Air Force and at Lockheed Martin have dismissed the very idea of a kill switch as silly. But before you put on your tinfoil hat and tell me, of course, that's what they're going to say to protect the conspiracy, let me explain why. The F-35 doesn't need a kill switch because, well, operating the most advanced and capable fighter jet on the planet requires a ton of support. So why rely on a top-secret hidden line of code that could potentially grenade relations between you and your closest allies slash biggest customers when you could just stop providing all of that necessary support if and when relations with an F-35 operator ever do begin to sour? Now, I've talked about this kill switch myth lots of times in the past, but this week, The Aviationist also ran a great in-depth piece on this topic, highlighting, well, the same thing I've been saying all along, that an F-35 kill switch not only doesn't exist, but doesn't need to. In fact, in recent weeks, both Belgian and Swiss officials have likewise come forward to confirm that this kill switch does not exist. Now, the F-35 does rely on the ALICE network, which is soon to be replaced by ODIN, and that helps to streamline logistics, and disconnecting from that network could make maintaining F-35s harder to do. Maybe even more importantly, another network link provides near-constant updates to the aircraft's mission data file, which provides up-to-date intelligence on adversary weapon capabilities and the threat environment while helping pilots plot the safest course through contested airspace. And while losing these systems could have a big impact on the aircraft's prowess in combat, it wouldn't stop it from fighting. Likewise, F-35 pilots do need to enter a code in the cockpit every time they fly. But as I've learned from F-35 pilots time and time again, these codes are provided by local command authorities and not the United States. But again, the easiest way to stop someone from operating their F-35s is just to cut them off from the logistics required to keep these jets flying and fighting at the top of their game. Now, the F-35A, which is the most commonly operated by foreign partners, requires a reported average of around six hours of maintenance for every one hour of flight time. And that maintenance comes with replacing consumables, swapping out components in need of repair, and a whole lot more. Without continued access to a steady supply chain for all the stuff you need to keep your F-35s running, well, they won't brick on you on day one, but it is only a matter of time before they become paperweights. So does America have an F-35 kill switch? Almost certainly not. Without sifting through each of those 8 million lines of code, we can't say for sure, but it just generally wouldn't make much sense to have one. Because the truth is, America doesn't need a kill switch to shut down people's F-35s.